Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Saturday the 29th of January. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I waited patiently upon you, O Lord. You stooped to me and heard my cry. You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Saturday night's psalm is Psalm 150. Hallelujah. Praise God in the holy temple. Give praise in the firmament of heaven. Praise God who is mighty indeed. Give praise for God's excellent greatness. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Give praise with lyre and harp. Praise God with timbrel and dance. Give praise with strings and pipe. Praise God with resounding cymbals. Give praise with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Genesis 18, verses 1 to 16. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favour with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. Then the men set out from there, and they looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to set them on their way. The choir of Norwich Cathedral sings the hymn, The God of Abraham Praise.
and our gospel reading is from St John chapter 6 verses 16 to 27. When evening came his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The next day, the crowd had stayed, that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away home alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hanging here in my study beside me is this famous icon, Rublev's The Holy Trinity, or The Three Visitors to Abraham. We who follow Jesus and treasure and ponder and are mystified by the doctrine of the Holy Trinity cannot help but see God in three persons, in these three angels, these three men that come to Abraham. But it is Abraham's reception of these guests, these visitors, that serve to inspire us. That is to say, as he receives them with reverence and dignity, he brings water and washes their feet. He offers them rest, brings bread and calf, curds and milk, and treats them as honoured guests. So we too, in our turn, are graced by God's presence. We do not deserve it. We cannot stop it, nor insist upon it. But we too are called to reverence and honour God. We too love and know God dearly in the breaking of the bread. And in God's presence, there is something that makes Sarah laugh. Not a joke with a punchline, but the notion that something seemingly and utterly impossible to her mind is nevertheless declared by these divine visitors. When I return, she is told. Sarah, you and Abraham will have a son. She's listening at the tent entrance and laughs to herself. But she hears these words. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? We are graced by the presence of God. Perhaps, perhaps very often, as was the experience of Abraham, 
in and through the company of other human beings. But in company with them and one another. In faith, much is promised to us. And in the face of some of that, perhaps, we laugh with derision. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? We forget it, we laugh at it, and maybe we should turn to it. Maybe our elders' meetings and church meetings, our conversations and our worship, our big and small meetings, our personal walk with God, we should be ever willing to be surprised by God's presence in those who are with us and to be asked, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? May God enable us to entertain angels, even if unaware. And may God turn our laughter of derision into the laughter of joy as we celebrate God's work among us and become agents, visitors, hosts and guests in God's plans. Amen. Our Saturday night New Testament song, a song of resurrection. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For since by one man came death, by another has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the evening light. And we pray that as you enfold us with the radiance of your glory, so you would shine into our hearts with the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O God, that we who are baptised into the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, may continually die to sin and be buried with him, that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection. For his sake, who died and was buried and rose again for us, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, Lord of hosts, hidden in the mystery of light, ceaselessly adored by countless holy angels. At creation, the Holy One sang for joy. The universe is filled with the messengers of your glory. The mysterious powers marvel to see you create a new people. The rebellious powers could not penetrate the secret wisdom of Calvary. The fearsome enemies of life were disarmed and led captive at the cross. The hosts in glory watched the world's deceiver fall from heaven. With joy, the angels welcome each returning sinner and guard the path of all who trust you. Awesome in judgment, unlimited in mercy, blessed are you, sovereign God, enthroned in light. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. You guide your church in the way of truth. Stir up among us the gifts of your grace. Make, we pray, our hearts open enough that our congregations might be places in which angels are entertained, in which laughter of joy penetrates our doings and our responses. As we believe in the God 
who can do wonderful things in us and through us and despite us. As we pray for the church tonight here in the East Midlands Synod, we pray in particular for our congregations in Milton Keynes, praying for ministers of the United Reformed Church serving in Milton Keynes and for our partners as Roman Catholic priests, Anglican priests and ministers of the Methodist and Baptist churches and for the wider network of the Christian family that worships across Milton Keynes. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy wisdom fills the whole of creation. By your spirit, renew the face of the earth. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. We are temples of the spirit. Confirm our lives in the service of the gospel. Enable us, we pray, to respond with faith and with faithfulness. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Your anointing restores wholeness to a broken world. Give healing to the sick, freedom to captives and hope to the dying. We continue to sustain our prayer for all facing the challenge of COVID-19. In the relaxed restrictions, but the still present cases, we pray for caution and care and responsibility. And we pray for all key workers, for our NHS and care home and hospice staff, for all engaged in the battle against COVID, for the rollout of vaccinations and boosters. And in particular, for those parts of the world for whom such is still a dream. We pray for those facing rising costs in food, housing, heat and so many other essentials and the fear that is gripping people in their own lives and own finances. We pray with Alison for her daughter-in-law Shannon as she approaches time to give birth. We pray with Liz for her great nephew Ryan and her daughter Emma. With Prince for Cheryl. With Andy for Mike, his dad and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of the him. With Judith for Catherine, her niece. For the Reverend Ruth Dillon. For the Reverend Graham Maskery and for Vera Maskery. And for those not named out loud, but whose needs we carry. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. Receive into your keeping those who have departed this life and comfort, we pray, the grieving. We continue to pray for the members of the family of the Reverend Margaret Taylor and for her friends at our Loughborough Church. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. As we rejoice in the power of the Spirit, may God grant us tonight the faith of the apostles, the boldness of the prophets and the strength of the martyrs. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen.
good night.